Okay. We're live. Go We're ahead. Live. <laughs> All right. Welcome to Carnival and Them Things. They're powered by We Culture. I'm Globy. And I'm Yuri, and welcome to our first ever episode. Thank you guys for joining us. And remember to subscribe at We Culture and follow us on Instagram as well. We Culture, W I K U L C H A. And hi, Globy. How are you? Hi, Yuri. I'm good. I'm good. Should be preparing for Miami Carnival right now, but we know that's been canceled. So <laughs> that's what we're starting today off with. Um, the lack of carnivals this year. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and I've never been to Miami Carnival, but I know you have been. So if you could just tell us, well, tell me, you know, what your experiences have been like. First of all, how many times have you been to Miami Carnival? I've been to Miami Carnival 12 times. Yes. That's a wow. long time. I know. <laughs> but I regard it as like my close off carnival. And if I'm not in the mood or don't have the time to do one of the really big ones, that I need to take time off during the week for, then I'll do Miami because Miami is just always on a holiday weekend and always that Sunday. So it's like the perfect escape for anybody that doesn't have a lot of PTO at work or if you just want to go right down the street. It's a two and a half hour flight from New York. So it's actually very well placed for a carnival chaser that doesn't have that much time. Ah, yeah, okay. 12 times. So it would be, I think, in a week and a couple of days. So right now we'd probably be getting our Fed outfits together, making sure everybody has flight tickets. We all have somewhere to stay. You have like your staple events, which are like your Soka Brainwash, because there's one in Miami also, uh, Mai Tai for Seasons Army. Then, of course, Juve. And everybody knows I love Rebel Nation. So I'm very sad to have not seen like a costume launch this year or anything. Even that, like, just give me a little teaser. Like, I would have been like, yes, I'm happy with just a little teaser of costumes, but we didn't even get that. So here we are in our house again. <laughs> <laughs> like we I, did since March. <laughs> yes. I actually, this year, I wanted to attend Miami Carnival for the first time because I saw, I've been watching Miami Carnival. It's not one of those carnivals I was ever really in tuned with. Um Because I considered it, you know, a diaspora. It is a diaspora carnival. Um <laughs> And I really wanted to make sure I got the traditional carnivals out of the way before I went to diaspora carnivals. But last year, um, my sister and you actually played in the same costume. And I'm just oh, like, nice. oh, nice. Yes. So did you, did she bring it home so that you could see it? Yes. Okay. I was going to say, I'm not sure if you had a chance to pay attention to the quality of the costume. Um, Oilan is, I usually always play in her designs and the quality, like the lycra is soft. And everything, like what they use to stitch it, the gemming, like traditionally, most times you play in a costume, it's pretty, but sometimes it hurts. Like you just get used to having the pains that come with wearing a costume, but her designs are like always amazing. So that's one thing I, I miss and like, you know, not having that to look forward to, or even people bullying me into wearing a certain section. Cause I like certain colors and people always like, no, Globy, you should try this color this year. So even that, like the sense of community from voting for a costume and counting down so that for the most part just about everybody from New York showing up like I missed that aspect of it so we're sad <laughs> I know oh, another I aspect have you this time I know to be on the road I know another aspect that I, I realized because everybody that I asked that I started to ask someone about Miami Carnival they said that you need to brace yourself because it's yeah. no sleep it's, it's cool. events yeah. events and it's events a lot in like three days because remember you, I mean it kicks off on Wednesday but everybody comes Thursday so Thursday to Monday is non-stop party and then people want to do like if we were in Antigua and still hit three four parties in a day like that's a lot so right <laughs> so <there's no> <laughs> you're definitely going non-stop and that can be exhausting so by the time you reach back home Tuesday night um if that's when you fly out like you're exhausted yikes okay yeah I'm I'm not braced. I'm not braced for that. Well, maybe next year, praise God, it will happen, <laughs> and then we can and start back. I don't. You know, speaking of that though, let's just talk about stamina for a while, because I mm -hmm. feel like now that we have not been in the the groove of like going to carnival, to carnival, to party, to party, and getting dressed, I don't know if I have that stamina anymore. Like, I'm gonna have to like train myself. <laughs> you have, like yesterday, I was walking in heels for like two hours, and I was like, yo, how? Look, I played mass in heels. Like, my legs are killing me. But I realized, like, you're out of practice. You're not doing it anymore. So we might not have that stamina anymore. And I'm going to have to get myself back there. That is and crazy. Definitely. I know. Rama takes yeah. you 
to places because I dance as a form of exercise and therapy and sometimes I'm doing it I'm doing like a two minute routine and I'm like I know if I was at a fet and I had Mm -hmm. in some alcohol I'd be okay but I'm here like (gasps) like dying I don't know how we do it I don't know how Caribbean people do it because just walking up my stairs, I go, oh my God, <laughs> like I'm so tired. <laughs> but you're right. Like when you're in a party with the right environment, you have your friends, you have your fat, you have alcohol, you have just the overall vibe and the adrenaline. Like I think that's what allows you to be able to party nonstop. But as is just doing it, taking two little sips and coming hand here and there in my house, I'm tired. Like I don't have this stamina I used to have in like March or February. Yes. I know for a lot of people, they thought Miami Carnival would happen. The later carnivals of 2020 would happen because they, I mean, I guess a lot of people were in a little denial and also didn't take it so severe that COVID was a thing. Um, So a lot of people were holding on to it, but we can see going into 2021 that we still may not have carnivals and what carnivals are going to, girl, when the man they tell Trinidad say, Non carnival day, I wept because if Trinidad not having carnival, right, I don't see anybody else having carnival. Yes. But to be honest, I wasn't surprised. And I think once I saw that Rio cancel this, because Brazil's carnival is bigger than Trinidad's, right? Like by numbers and the amount of people that travel internationally to go. And then they have um, Salvador Carnival as well, which is also very big. So once I saw that they were able to cancel what is traditionally like a very big festival and the competition and everything, I said, mm, I think this is going to have a ripple effect. And it's almost like having somebody be the leader in an industry to kind of cancel something and everybody take heed to that. So I, I feel like for more or less, I knew Trinidad's was not going to happen. What I thought would it, it would be is probably like more regional. So people who are on islands already, because the cases are much lower than people that are overseas, it would still continue. But the carnival product itself, as we know it, that's not happening, um, not for next year. So what do you think a year, or let's not say a year, let, let, let's be gentle. What do you think <laughs> six months looks like next year with no carnival? Okay, so definitely I forecasted, so I'll be honest with you because you're being gentle, but I actually forecasted <laughs> that St. Kitts might be the only place to have a carnival because their carnival Mm -hmm. is technically 2022 um so i also next year december yes okay so so the next one and the reason why a lot of people you know have been fighting me on it but i said we have to look at it on several different levels we have to look at look at it on an economic standpoint we have to look on it from you know people not feeling safe um so you have to to battle those different um those different dynamics when it, we look at carnival because carnival, yes, it's cultural, but carnival hopping, carnival chasing is a luxury for most right. people. No, it is. It absolutely you know, is. it is. It's not a ne- it's, it's not necessary. Um, it's not exactly. a commodity. It's not something that has to be done. So you're absolutely right. And a lot of these carnivals, making them large carnivals, depend on carnival tourism, mm-hmm. and we can see that that's not going to happen. I definitely think. Trinidad not happening a lot of festivals won't be happening so we can also throw some music festivals in there as well um I'm sorry St. Kitts (laughs) St. Kitts is a festival and then um somebody who's who has a jazz well a couple people have jazz festivals St. Lucia has jazz St. Lucia has one I think um Jamaica does something in the summertime not a jazz but like the reggae some fest um I do think all of them are still going to be on virtual platforms for the most part once numbers and kind of become settled um Mm -hmm. so you're right I just don't think like stakeholders are ready to hear that because what does that look like if your sole base of income is either off of entertainment or you're a promoter or a DJ because like DJs for example have not worked since March there's been no events I mean there's some minor that might have been putting on events or charging for a virtual experience but for the most part how we were used to seeing DJs basically from day to day in a different place that has changed so what do you think the industry will look like for stakeholders overall i think generally i don't think a lot of them will be able to see a financial benefit and we saw that with jamaica the big issue with jamaica 
Jamaica has a major issue on top of the fact that I don't think they will happen again next year. They have another major issue when it came to finances, putting out a statement, letting persons know that they won't be refunded in a time of COVID. Now, as a business experience, and I can understand what's happening on the background, but I feel like they didn't prepare well enough. And that is what stakeholders have to look out for. They have to look for insurance. They have to look for all these things that they should have been looking for before they need to pay attention to a lot more. They have to think about Mm -hmm. space Mm -hmm. allocation because some of them, because I've seen St. Lucia, St. Lucia has been slowly bringing back some events, some boat rides. I see them, they've been, you know, so we have to look at space allocation, um, maximum capacity. What does it look like if we're not going to pack up a fete anymore? Mm -hmm. If you're going to have just... You know, if you're going to do the right maximum amount of 300 people in a space, which is most of the times, we have to be honest, event promoters, you just be packing us in, you know. There's ram out of space, I was going to say, they (laughs) pack us in. So it's funny because I think I even tweeted that how before an event, you knew a party was popping when you saw RL people in there. When it pack up, you're like, oh, good, like it's RL people in a party, like it really happening, right? But now it's like when you see a large crowd or too many people, you're like, mm, I don't know if I'm trying to do that because like yeah. you're worried of contacts or you being too close. So not even or to even give promoters some good ideas if you all are listening, some like really good social distancing can be put in place if you put people in pods and you separate everybody. So basically like everybody has a VIP experience. For one, yes. no overselling of tickets, of course, larger venue spaces. I've seen a couple in New York utilize like a park and pump. So you kind of party like tailgate style by your car and you limit interactions with other people. So I know event space itself for promoters might change. But for a DJ now who's used to having 10 gigs in a month because he's able to travel state to state or island to island, now that borders are closed and all of that, their income is being impacted. So yes. I'm looking to see, and I'm kind of excited to see because out of um, tragedy, there's always something great that comes out of it, sadly, right? Um, yes. Like Airbnb was born out of uh, like <laughs> us not having housing and a market crash and all of that. So I'm mm-hmm. interested to see how creatives pivot in this space and how we kind of adapt and learn and how the carnival product itself is going to change. Um, maybe carnival chasing might not be a thing anymore simply because you the regulations to come into each island will now be different um the pcr test requirements and all those things are probably going to change how we see just going from place to place and even for you for your safety like after i've now taken four pcr tests like i'm not trying to take any more right like i'm probably (laughs) gonna go home now so all of those (laughs) all of those things are gonna be impacted yes um, as carnival pans out next year I definitely. And I think with the the issue with DJs, I think DJs definitely are going to have to take a chunk of virtual as in selling records. So we're going to because oddly enough, we we've been doing a lot of things that have put us back to to our roots. We've had to go back to a lot of basic stuff. And I remember when DJs used to make a set and sell them to radio stations. That used to be a thing before oh, wow. ha- right you know before DJs right. were actually because you weren't doing live. it live right exactly yeah. so I think a lot of DJs That's are gonna true. have to look into that they'll have to look into the fact that hey yeah. if somebody's having an That's event beautiful. I'm gonna have to sell they're gonna have to crack down on streaming rights and that's another fight that we have in the Caribbean yeah you know all of that stuff we have to look forward that's already to kind it. of been pinged because right because Facebook the other day is trying I think as of October 1 actually um, has tried to either cancel or force people to pay for live DJ experiences. So this is even going to build out the industry in another way, um, where if you're just hosting an experience either via Instagram Live or Facebook Live, that's no longer a thing because you're taking money on donations for it. So even the web services that we use to put on these platforms are now probably going to charge for that experience, right? So you would have to use Twitch or something else or creates your own... Um, I guess, like, web platform that you can do that on. I did see something that was very interesting, though, you were already talking about that, was DJ Puffy was DJing a party live. I think it was either Antigua, some island that he wasn't in, but they had him on the screen DJing into the party. And I thought that was really amazing. Yes. Just because, like, you know, he's still a very, like, big DJ name and all of that, and he's not able to physically come to the party. But he was still there, and the crowd was hype, and they had chairs running. And I was like, yo, this is lit. So... 
you can imagine that I think a lot of people in their home base are probably going to be able to have to stream DJs in for that experience. I did see an uptick also in people having more home events. Yes. So like the decor has been glam, like people yes. having at home picnics and it's really been amazing. Like at one point it's been surprising, but amazing. Like how you can't hold us back, right? Like, yeah, <laughs> we have COVID and all of this, but I've seen a complete change in, in the events that are being held now. Silent headphone parties, which people were kind of more or less playing around with and hated, but now you can't all be stunned up by a DJ booth. So exactly. now we have the headphones. It's, it's really been interesting to see. Yes. And I feel like yeah. live performance is the same way, as you said, DJ Puffy. And it may work out for the betterment of promoters as well, because when you think about a promoter, you have to bring mm-hmm. in this DJ. That's his airline ticket. You have to give him per yeah. diem. The least you yep. give a, a DJ these days is yep. $70 per day. Then you right. have the hotel. And on top of that, you have to pay them. Now think about mm-hmm. it. You're revolutionizing your event. Yes, you have to pay for your LED screens um, and your maybe your, your background setup. Or but you choose you, a venue that already has it to cut on cost. But you're exactly. absolutely right. It will work out cheaper in their aspect. And even if you think about your wellness, a DJ no longer has to be in four different places in a matter of three days. And so that probably even helps to just making sure you have a strong internet connection and you're home and you're able to provide a really good experience. So you're right. I think the wear and tear on bodies and then also the benefit, the financial benefit is, is going to go far. It's just the people who have not been able to adapt what's going to happen for them. Yes. Like, if you still just wait, because there's some DJs who are flourish and there's some DJs I see a peep from since oh. March. It's like, where are you <laughs> Yeah, making no mixtape, nothing. Like, what, what's happening? <laughs> so it's like, are you trying to stay relevant? Or are you trying to, to pivot and do something completely different? Yeah, and I feel yeah. like we have to also look, because this is another argument that I try to push to people, because I've been seeing constantly promoters across the region complaining about, you know, they're pushing for having events, having events, especially countries mm-hmm. that are not having events. And okay, fine, we have these events, you throw this event, you charge me $100, who and where people get this money from? Because half... Say, um, $100. <laughs> <laughs> $100, like, y'all wild, that's, that's a lot of money. Um, let me see. Yeah. I think $100 in the midst of a financial and epidemic is, is steep, simply because you cannot afford people the same amenities, right? Exactly. I cannot... We can't have the glam bathroom where we all chill in the the whole, I don't know, VIP setup has changed. Even funny enough, you brought that up, Yuri. Like, so in Brooklyn, they were having some party and they were charging like $800 for three bottles, but the the space was somebody's backyard. And I'm like, are you either one telling me I can rent out my backyard and do this? Or two, like, why would I not just be at my home if I can pay $40 for some Johnny Walker versus paying you $800 for three of them? And I get it, you're trying to make up your, your cost, but the experience itself has changed. The, once you're paying, most of the time you're paying $800 for the name of the events you are at and just the allure of it all. But that has completely changed. So ticket exactly. prices are normally come down. They have to, they have yeah. to. And yeah. I'm concerned about some of the carnivals that postponed um, with a set ticket price. So we can look at St. Lucia Carnival. A lot of us did mm-hmm. not, get, we kept our ticket hoping mm-hmm. that it would happen for 2021 um mm-hmm. what is it going to look like now because if you're telling me okay well it's only a set amount of people on a boat and i'm oh, not yeah, gonna get like, x y and z anymore get in, yeah well tickets were already selling out without kobe being in the this in the <laughs> even in this topic so <laughs> i didn't even have tickets for saint lucia yet like because yes. i where was i don't even know like i was thinking about all my three carnivals before saint lucia before I could think about St. Lucia. So like that, for example, where the infrastructure of the boats and the venue spaces were already at a cap, what's going to happen for all the people, you're right, that were holding yeah. on and looking forward to us going. Um, it even yes. makes me think like now, Soka brainwash tickets for Trinidad would be coming out around this time. So like yes. just the not having the anxiety we're having to log on and find those tickets and the prices and then people are selling them for 100% markup and all those things. Like we don't have to, be, right? Um, all that that whole dynamic has changed. Like, what does November and December even look like? Especially for me, when usually I'm always in planning phase for January. Like, well, I would have been going to St. Kitts this year. So basically January and Trinidad coming right after. So yeah, mm-hmm. that's interesting. Yeah, we'll we have, have to... Things. 
think about all of that a lot of people aren't working anymore so yeah. I mean even carnival chasers that are actively like that's what they do like that's their mm. life some of them aren't working anymore they they can't get up and go you know so we have to to look at all of because we have to go back to basics because carnival is it's expensive but we made it expensive it's actually very well, cultural oh, as, as in the industry the industry I'm has about created to say because <laughs> i would like i remember still paying i would never forget paying 180 dollars to pay mass in miami that is no <laughs> 700 800 dollars and I, I will say we on both ends like you're right it's both consumer and the industry itself right because the more mm-hmm. big names you want and the more popular a brand gets or whatever you want to go to a certain party obviously the ticket price is going to go up because that's natural supply and demand that's economy one yes. one right yes but then i also realized as the consumer we want certain experiences when i come i want sunscreen inside day and i want bottles of champagne like and those things cost money whether you're getting them on consignment or not so I think you're right it goes hand in hand of us wanting a different type of experience and how that looks um yeah we have to go back yeah we're gonna have to but I was saying that like I would be so happy to go to like a pure root t-shirt mask just Mm -hmm. I don't even need nothing tell me bring my own cooler Mm -hmm. I pop in I just have a like just give me a t-shirt on my wristband and I get to go I don't need anything else Make sure you have your plexiglass. So if I ask for some ice, nobody not spitting on me or vice versa. And <laughs> we good. Like there's no need to like go to the big sponsorships and all those things anymore. And that'd be really cheap. And I think you would see who really loves carnival just for the carnival versus for the hype of the carnival. You know what I mean? Like like there's the yes. people that just come to carnival and they're like, y'all gonna play soccer all day? Like where the rap at? <laughs> not to say we can't hear one or two rap songs, but uh that's not what this is about no. you know what I mean like, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's not what we're here for we're not here for Drake and as well, much as I love Rick Ross we're not here for Rick Ross Ooh. we're here to hear Cohen and Marshall and Kess mm-hmm. and you know that is what we're here for yes yeah. and we're gonna hear the Iron Band the Iron Band All right, through. and Steel Pan that is what we want and the drums that's, that's what we're here for the true like African Caribbean whole mix up and mesh and Kaizo and, and Calypso that's what we're here for so it'll be interesting to see parts of those elements of it come back as yes. well as some parts of it change as well. Yes, definitely. I feel like we're going to see. I think I can, I am definitely, as much as I'm sad that mm-hmm. a lot of carnivals didn't happen this year and a lot of carnivals aren't going to happen the start of next year, I am actually a bit relieved because I felt like carnivals were becoming very... What was that? Like, we're having conversations of, oh my God. Yeah, commercial. We were we're, were cussing about costumes. We're cussing about, Mm -hmm. oh, they did this. Who didn't steal this design? Who's doing this design over? How much this cost? But even that, you're right. You're so right. I didn't even think about that, but you're so right. It became too much of a... I don't know any words because like I, I mean I, I don't really care for if a design is stolen or not because whatever I like I'm going to wear it but the nitpicking part of it yes. started to take away from the overall thing of it granted I think we are in a space where criticism is part of consumerism right because if I'm paying you $900 I don't want to wear the same costume that I wore two months ago so I can see somebody kind of being like nitpicky about that or if it is a color or you leaving people out overall when we talk about body size and colorism and all of those things because at the end of the day you're paying to be here and then if we look at it from a historical standpoint in the Caribbean anyway carnival is birthed out of emancipation right it's yes. birthed out of black people celebrating their freedom so when I'm now put in a position where black people aren't being represented in what's supposed to be ours I can see why people would have that take um mm-hmm. but you're right in the, in the sense of the shift kind of having that break from not having to discuss those things or that not being in your mind might be something open and even to your point I remember one girl like I think I saw a tweet and like a few people are just happy for the opportunity to sit back and save without the FOMO because at first yes. I was like, well, y'all can stay home and save. Like, what? Why you can't stay home and save <laughs> on your own? But they're like, no, Globy, it's a FOMO. I'm like, okay, I get it. You yes. can save with all the pressure of that. I'm like, I really ain't going. And I get <laughs> that aspect of it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. definitely. And I feel yeah. like when when we, when we, um, I think 
I know a lot of old revelers. Like when I'm t- talking old, like you mean old like this- age age like 60 okay. something they've been playing carnival up until this day they still play carnival mm-hmm. and i i think it's a mixture of them being old they've seen every color combination in the book already so mm-hmm. there's nothing new but they're mm-hmm. the type that are yeah i'm wearing purple this year they don't care how the costume look no that's it that's why i mean they reach. Like 60. i want pink that's <laughs> it whatever pink i like i in there. yeah they yeah. don't care they're yeah. just there for the experience and i feel like that is what carnival is supposed to be. Yeah, I am here I for a good agree. time. It's not a long time. It's a good time. I'm going to drink as much rum as I can. Yeah. Not too much, but enough. You know, I'm going to enjoy my local food on the side of the road, street food, Caribbean yeah. street food. I'm yeah. going to dance until my waist can't work no more. I'm, you know, release whatever done. stress of the year and you're done. And mm-hmm. I feel like that is what, because planning to go to carnival is stressful. Like, yeah. It's but that's because alone. it's the same thing I mentioned before. The price has yes. heightened because consumers are demanding more while the price on goods itself are going up. Like, all oh, you want ostrich feathers. You know how much ostrich feathers cost? Like, you don't want the, the normal ugly goose feathers. Or remember when we used to have the carnival um, backpacks that were just on cardboard. People used to yes. complain about those things or not being able to maneuver them as well in a crowd. Or you want to have the wings you can take off or the ones that can fold out. Like, those things cost money. And I think the more intricate our designs get and the more moets you want to drink versus just some andres that's gonna cost you money so i think yes that's what we have to keep in mind that we're asking for those things so maybe what might happen is as the demand for certain luxuries and amenities are decreasing then the price can go down i'm actually hoping to see a price decrease to be honest um having played mass now over the last 10 years as an adult it's interesting to see how the price like i said from 180 to 900 dollars in the same place is a big jump but yes. it's been over a 12 year span in miami so i'm interested to see if it'll at least come down a little or maybe they'll take back some things that we don't necessarily need like maybe we might not buy lunch on your like get lunch from the truck like you're saying maybe i'll buy food on the side of the road or maybe i'll have to bring my own little pouch of alcohol like whatever it is to cut down on the overall cost for the bands so that we're able to come back but even yes. from that perspective if the bonds have not been making money for a year and two years, what do you think that's going to look like anyway? Because there's no revenue right now. <laughs> and for some of them, don't forget, you still have to pay for a website. If yep. like Jamaica, for example, that now finally pushed, they were still having to pay for production teams, still paying for marketing, still paying for their social media team and all of those things. Like We don't think about the behind, but all of those things, the storage of their costumes and mannequins, all of those things. Like what? What does that look like with no income for a year, a year and a half? And unfortunately, I feel like sometimes it's going to sound very harsh, but as businesses, businesses are risk and you're going to have to take that L because really yeah. truly, you can't give it to anyone. There's not a fund here saying, we understand mass bans that you had to take an L for 2021 because of COVID. So here's some money. There's not that. There's no fund there to say there's that. There's no CARES so- Act. Okay, let me not say there's no CARES Act, but sorry to cut you, but you still like how any state they had the CARES Act to help small businesses. We don't yes. have something like that in the, in the Caribbean to be able to assist. No, that's no. interesting. Yes. That's very, I mean- very interesting. And it's wow. funny, it's funny now because I remember some years ago, artists, um, design artists, music artists were fighting for funds to be created to support mm. artists in the region. And I remember a lot of people fighting it. No, it never came into fruition, never, nothing ever happened about it. Now, look, we're in this position where that fund would have been would have able been to necessary. help us. Absolutely. And like I think a bailout. Yeah, and I think yeah. what's going to happen, you're not going to see a lot of bands reemerge for the next couple of years, if at all. A lot of bands are actually not going to occur. I'm not, I don't have any names. I'm just sitting to see yeah, the list I, get short. I, right, I don't have names either, but I, I'm with you. I don't think some bands are going to survive this at all, especially if it was a younger band. If it was a band that's like four, because remember, most businesses fail within the first five years. So if it was a younger band where their income to profits margin was very, very close, the likelihood, especially if they, the ones that didn't produce anything this year will be fine because they didn't put, yes. they probably didn't shell out as much money yet. 
the ones that had already bought materials, already paid for production and all those things, or at least had them 50% done, they're going to see a hit. We might probably not see them or they're going to come back at a much, much lower scale because they haven't had income for a long yes. time. And then the costumes that they started making, they had to store them. The materials that are there, remember, they're rolling them over. So it's the same marketing and all that again. Um, just the cups that they probably ordered that same 2020 on it. I already tweeted. I said, don't be surprised if all you're drinking from the same 2020 <laughs> cup <laughs> and flying a 2020 round because it, it's paid for already. Like, yes, left to me with me, I just scratch it out for a little shop and just put a one on it for you. I'm like, hey, you but all of those things by then, I think, should not even matter because we should just be so happy, happy. that we yes. have in Carnival that it should be a good time. Like, I know business and what number on the cup. I just want a cup tank and keep it. Yeah, <laughs> I so. suggest for bands that, so I'm going to look at Jamaica. No, St. Lucia. No, I'm going to look at the bands for Antigua, Grenada, Barbados coming straight down the line. Mm. Those summer bands, carnivals. summer carnivals um, and the two, I think it's two winter carnivals. I think some, there's a diaspora carnival that's in December-ish. Not I think it. It's saying, they're St. Kitts and there's some somebody else has a Montserrat. I think Montserrat has a carnival. In. Right, so right. But it is, Montserrat yeah. is January 1st for the parade itself. So it and the, yes. the party days are in, in December. You're right. Yeah. They definitely have an advantage and I just, I am not a mass creator. I will never take that headache up. It's a lot of work. But I will suggest going back to cloth designs and when yeah. I say cloth designs I'm talking about the capes I'm talking about the yes the extravagant um bra but everything else is basic the nice right, bottom pieces yeah. go with those it's okay I think if we just it, it, it's you're right it is okay to have that reset and I think if we just do kind of if you think of bikini material Yes. If on, on if you even look at a costume, I wish I had a bra. Maybe I'll bring it on next time. If you even look at the costume material itself, there's always an overlay of really pretty fabric, and then there's the beading on top of it. To be honest, I don't even need the beading on top of it. Just give me a little pretty, like something that might be translucent, that colorful, or when the sun hits it, it have a little shine, so it's glowy on my skin, and we good with that. You're absolutely right. We don't need necessarily all of the grandiosity to bring it back. But they're going to have to scale back by force anyway, because again, yes. there's been no income for a year to a year and a half. So that has is going to be significantly impacted. Yes. And I am a bit concerned for persons that were in production, especially Jamaica, saying that they outright. Jamaica that they is the worst. It. Jamaica, I the think, worst. has been has been hit the most because they were literally in the middle. They've had to shift, they're going through the refund thing. They've been storing these costumes, don't forget, from since January when they started making them up till now. And then they had to shift. And then they're still trying to, to have the same costumes again next year. And then they're early enough where they will still be impacted. And again, early enough where shifting will still mess them up financially. So for Jamaica, yeah. it'll be interesting because they are the ones that had to do the shift. Um, they have their costumes that they've been storing that they're going to have to shift again in April and they're not late enough where if they have to shift, they won't be impacted. Right. Like, cause, and who knows when they might shift to, cause even when they were shifting this time, we we're like, well, why October? Everybody wants to have a carnival in October. We have Miami. And then I think Cayman was talking about moving to October. And it was literally every week. It's carnival. So yes. We'll see. We'll see. I, I do feel just... bad for them. They, they are yes. in the crux of it. I think everybody else was able to kind of escape or not escape, but kind of be okay. But they're in the crux of of an, a financial impact to them overall. Yes, and I'm just wondering because great um, Jamaica, funny enough, is also in a advantage of a you know, you know in an advantage of a space because their culture, their carnival is not cultural, whereas everybody right. else is a lot more cultural. Like you can't imagine Trinidad not having a carnival. You can't imagine St. Lucia not having a carnival. Mm -hmm. You can actually see Jamaica not having a carnival. Right. Jamaica, it's not their, their cultural thing. So I'm also saying... So do you mean like in an advantage where they could cancel it altogether? Yes. Or in a... Okay, gotcha. I think they could... What, they could... what happens to the stakeholders though? Because they can't uh, imagine not having it. What does they... Bacana, Jamaica, and who's been around for 20 years do without a carnival? 
ah, boy, I think what's going to happen to them, it's going to, it's going to shift back to when Dream just started. Dream events. Dream. Dream was amazing. Yes. When Dream was, yes, Dream's origins were more cultural. Yeah, people came in and whatever, but Mm -hmm. they didn't do Dream for us. They didn't yeah, it was for their locals. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and I think that's what's gonna happen. Back in a back in a, will keep carrying on. Back in a mm-hmm. is one of the they were carrying Jamaica Carnival by themselves for you know, years. No, on their back. When I went yes. the first time in 2015, I was girl. I was on the road like, okay, wow, this <laughs> it's hot, it's long, <laughs> like because they they don't do a rest stop. That was why they didn't yes. have like what we have known as complete rest stop now. So I was like, I'm a little tired, but. Um, let's keep going and afterwards like the bands that came about in 2017 implemented like a full let's sit down and plop rest up and that yes. I think is kind of what made it fine but being in that hot sun for nine hours straight and I drinking and walking on the go eating on the go <laughs> was exhausted yeah. yeah but I think they will they Jamaica back in our Jamaica will definitely find a way I cannot speak for the other bands because mm-hmm. um, they because a lot of them have other entities outside of Carnival where they can piggyback off of. So we can look mm. at Dream. Dream has Exodus. Right. Right. Part of Exodus, right. Exactly. So, I mean, they can take an L. I mean, so, and I'm not saying this lightly. I'm not saying taking an L lightly because that's money. But mm-hmm. I'm just saying they can mean, sh- you know, twist into something else other than Carnival. Zemaike can but twist into all something of else. Your, if all of your, I guess, buckets are or all of your eggs are in the entertainment buckets whether it's the carnival buckets or just pure jamaican entertainment or reggae dance or whatever or even just them just hosting parties regularly i can't even remember a name now but just them hosting events regularly and all of that has compressed and is not able to occur that is still a major hit overall it's like they're not making money on the entertainment stream at all um, mm-hmm. and that like I was sitting there at one point I think July came around and I was like yo I was really thinking about DJs like the most because to me they're just regular day-to-day people that this is their job or whatever creative passion that they love I'm like yo you have not worked since March we in August September no like September, no I, October I, that, yes. right right well no October but mind-blowing to me that yes. like this is the the state that we're in. If somebody would have told me that in January, uh, Globe, you should go ahead and make sure you have masks and everything, I'd be like, why need that for? Like, I live in my best. <laughs> I literally <laughs> remember going to Shanghai. I was in China a couple of years ago and they wear masks, regular surgical masks reg- regularly when they're sick and or traveling as to not infect anybody else and to protect themselves. And I was there like, wow, like y'all look kind of crazy. And this is literally what we look like now. Literally, yeah. <laughs> like, same thing. Yeah. So I, if y'all would have told me this in January, I'd be like, you lying. I don't need no mask. I live my life. I ain't worried about that. Yes. So, I, I see it. But question for you, though. Do you think, because we're looking at the entertainment industry on a whole, because mm-hmm. um, personally, I think it is easier, not easier, but it's more, you can find more efficient ways to pull off, let's say, an event, like a party or something something a lot more stationary opposed to a carnival because carnival is moving right you have to think of you th- and i think carnival employs a lot more close proximity contact whereas an event you can say yeah because when, hey, when party, you get drunk and want to wine you're right but anyway go on when you party yeah you're, when you're in the party it's okay you're gonna say let's segregate and you say Tony's Tony's section. So Tony's section only has it six people. These six people mm-hmm. came together. They're there. They're there. They're there. And you can manage a party a lot more efficiently, rather than, in my opinion, than a uh, than a carnival. Carnival with is moving. Exactly. What do so, you think? but I think the same things would apply though, because carnival is moving, but we're still open air, and people would have to be cognizant of them. Either one managing your drunkenness. Because that's what, when you kind of don't care anymore. Inhibitions are you're a little bit more free because you're now intoxicated or tipsy. So I think you would either have to remember like, hey, this is not the space that we're in. So pots of parties would need to be set up with social distancing things put into place. People would have to be there actively cleaning them. I think if we had a, a drinks truck, we'd have to have plexiglass on it. 
probably put everybody like build out in separate booths. Let's say based on the type of drink you want, you go to the one that's only a scorch booth, right? Or a, a Moet booth or whatever, like on the truck itself, but separated. I think the DJ's perspective would have to change as well. It probably can't be as interactive when they dive in into the crowd. Like the whole crowd diving thing might have to change. But if we even mesh the two where we're talking about having a stationary carnival, though people might hate that, to at least have some remnants of the experience, we could do that in a large park. Like, I don't know when you were younger, you all ever had like Queen Show or those type of things where, right? Yeah. That pageantry is like, an original way back in the day <laughs> we'd have carnival village, village. We don't, yes. I don't even know if we're still doing that but yes actually we are still doing that but it's traditional so most of us don't go to that anymore but to that point we could all literally come into a park into the same type of pods I was talking about or maybe even like mini truck pods that people could do like build out it's gonna cost a little more on the production side however I think the long-term benefit of building out into an actual brand can be seen if people like you have four or five friends partying in a brand in a, in a, a little truck pod everybody bring your your whining partner so that would be the difference because the whole let's whine on a stranger concept that did at least for the next two years that did because i don't know where the stranger come out i don't know if you're sick or anything like that so i think it would be more of a friend to friend family type of thing and if people want to pass around and go visit their friends like hey i in pod or whatever and who have this type of experience that you could do but you're absolutely right. So we would have to kind of mesh a stationary being into what carnival is about. Nobody say carnival has to be a stripping down the road. It's just yes. a celebration. It's just us celebrating life and our emancipation and freedoms. I know emancipation and freedom mean the same thing, but you know, you get what I mean. Like, yes, that's yes. what it's about. So even if it's stationary and it's come as you are and you bring your own bikini mask or wherever your jumpsuit, wherever it is you want to wear, I think that can be a concept that we embrace. Like it, and it happened on Carnival Monday and Tuesday. And even That's from true. the island's perspective or wherever we are, you don't need as much police because you're not moving, right? You don't need mm -hmm. as many trucks because you don't need a truck. Like, so we might be able to cut down on costs somewhere and expand it elsewhere. I think like a band like Tribe could put that on in, in the Savannah Park if we want to do that. Because Tribe is a very large band. I could see them doing something that's stationary, like when they have their um band launches and those type of things. I I can see that happening. Miami yeah. is another place I can see it happening because they have a big venue. If we do it in the stadium, that's an option that it can be done as well. So we'll see what happens. By giving all if I see anybody do this. By the way, I want to look for sex. Yes. I give all, you, all the ideas, huh? All your hair is here first. I just say it. So, if I see yeah. my capes on the road. Right. If you see your capes, you already know where it come on. Like, we give all you the ideas. Just consult exactly. with us and say, hey, we doing this. Do you have any ideas? We don't mind. We don't mind. We don't yeah, mind. Just, just us, yes, but I know? will. it will be very interesting to see how that all comes out. Definitely. Yeah. And I think that we covered everything. Um, in did. terms of carnivals, carnivals canceling and what to look forward to for 2021. And I do encourage people, everyone that's listening, viewing, to continue to be safe. You yeah. saw that Florida, Wear Miami is open. I, I, I beg in y'all. I beg yes, in y'all in Miami. going to party in Orlando, for example, or wherever that is open, please wear a mask, wash your hands, social distance. Like, I know a lot of people into the pandemic shaming. I know pandemic police, but just make sure you're protecting yourself and or the others and enjoy your life short. Enjoy yourself. Exactly. Yeah. Be careful. Be careful. <laughs> I, I mean, I want to go out too, but like... I scared still. I can't I'm really party thing yet. I still scared for that one. Like, I might take a little trip here or there, but I still scared for the party. I know yes. already yet. Because you just take one drunk person and they sweat and they cough on you. Next thing you know, I died. And I already have like a little obsessive cup of this disorder. <laughs> so I good. I don't want to have to like be on the fritz while I'm at the fest. So I don't want to worry about that yet. So I, I hope still. Yes. Yeah. And for those people that, you know, fear of missing out, thankfully nothing's happening. For those people that are not working, it's not being rubbed in your face that you're not working nope. and you can't attend carnivals. Like nope. everybody's just cooling. Yeah. Just chill, relax save enjoy right. yes <laughs> anyway thank you again this is our first episode all right and make sure you all subscribe so that you can tune in to the next couple that we have coming for you and if you have topics maybe dm us after you see this one maybe we might discuss them because we'd love to hear from you guys
Yes, definitely. So we're here, Carnival and Them Things Day, powered by We Culture. I'm Yuri and I'm Globy. <laughs> Have a great one.